Good day, everyone, and welcome to Virtual Counter Hollows Live Music Channel. I'm Anna Spinsky, and I'll be hosting today's very exciting program for you. Um, this is a part of music and musicians around the globe daily show. For these shows, we invite musicians, performers, educators, publishers, music managers, artist managers, and many others involved in the performing arts field to share their insights, to help musicians and everyone navigate today's quite frankly, very confusing world of music performance and music composition. And so today I'm very excited to have this show um, and to hear the music w uh, composed by the rising French composer Anne de Boisson and to interview her. She's um, in our studio straight from France. And all of this is happening in, with the purpose to serve musicians and music lovers out there in the entire world uh, by providing performances and music that is live and it will inspire um, everyone to participate in the live music events and to bring valuable inspiration to all of our audiences. Um, why do we do that? Because we are very passionate about connecting musicians and audiences in real time, musical performances and events brought to you from the entire globe. <laughs> Our seasons are filled with events, both virtual online live streamed events and the ones in the actual physical concert halls. And um, this show is a daily music and musicians around the globe show, but we also broadcast many events from various um, venues, including a whole season at the Carnegie Hall, seasons with various orchestras around the world. So let's just take a quick look at what this season holds. season so many events for everyone of different ages different instruments different fields genres from all countries around the world and uh, of all walks and we work with a lot of composers there's so much talent out there the music you heard accompanying this little trailer is composed by our own composer in residence Ala Lowry so composers out there uh, get in touch with us we love working with you and today's program is dedicated to wonderful French composer and the boy song um, check our websites please for upcoming concerts in just a couple of weeks we are starting to pro um, bring programs from Cairo in Egypt and then followed by the concerts by Bogoslav Martini Philharmonic from Czech Republic and in Egypt we're working together with a phenomenal orchestra there of w which will be um, presenting a concert in the uh, Cairo Opera House Cairo Opera Orchestra so um Let's see what that is about.
mission is to bring together the world, worldwide audiences and worldwide music organizations and musicians who are doing incredible work out there and um, presenting beautiful concerts. So it's time for me to introduce Andy Boisson, our featured guest for today's um, program of uh, music and musicians around the globe. After um, a childhood shaped by travels, Andy Boisson quickly moved towards composition. She is a winner of the first prize at the International Competition Music and the Earth um, in composition in 2013. She received a state commission from France for a quintet for cellos as part of the commemoration of the centenary um, of the 1914 through 1918 World War. This piece was created in presence of more than 80 UNESCO ambassadors. And then she received another state commission from the Army Brass Band, uh, who performed at the annual gala concert of the Land Forces 2018. She's a winner of numerous residences highlighting composers in France, Israel, Belgium. Um, she had a chance to regularly be invited to festivals to particip participate in professional meetings as, as a jury member. And has composed music for some 50 audiovisual projects, including a feature film, The Taste of Apples in Red, um, is Red, and we will hear a clip of that music in our today's program. She won numerous awards and special mentions in many uh, film festivals. And um, in um, 2021, she released her second album entitled Fusion. And again, we'll hear a little bit um, of a presentation from that album. Um, these are all her own compositions. Um, she also regularly performs in the recitals all over uh, Europe and France, Switzerland, Germany, Sicilia, Sardinia, and many other countries as a pianist and a composer. And together with her fantastic sister, who is a violinist, and we'll hear some of their duo today as well. And uh, just a week ago, I was privileged to hear Anne's fantastic composition, Metamorphose, performed and no other stage as, but at Carnegie Hall and it had a great success um, uh, at Carnegie Hall was received by the audience with great warmth and performed uh, by a flutist from Austria and um, a harp harpist from Juilliard. Now I would like to invite Anne to join me in the studio and it's a great pleasure to have you with us. Uh, welcome, thank you for taking time and joining us from France. Thank you so much for this introduction, Anna. Thank you. I'm so excited to, to be there. It's so nice. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> and I have so many questions which I want to ask you. Um, as a very successful and very young composer, that's um, you know you. a dream come true for many people. So uh, first of all, this was a, such a great success um, of your piece at the Carnegie Hall. I was there, the audience was on their toes the entire time, the performance was beautiful. Um, I wanted oh. to ask, why did you select this particular piece, the Metamorphose, to be performed at the Carnegie? Oh, it's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, Metamorphose has a, a special history because it was um, a piece that was commissioned ordered by uh, the flutist Elizabeth Most, who played uh, at Carnegie Hall uh, yeah, two I met her. ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's a wonderful flutist and such a yeah, nice person. Fantastic. It was such a great pleasure. Yeah, fantastic, uh, fantastic flutist. Yeah, we know now for quite four years. And, um, and, and yeah, so she commissioned uh, this piece two years ago. And, and it was performed uh, as a world premiere in the wonderful church in Austria. Uh, and this church was fantastic, a church I, know, I remember with a fantastic stained glass, so it was in Salzburg. And, and composing this, uh, this uh, piece was a full joy uh, to me and very, very emotional experience. And with this piece, I, um, I try to explore different kind of sounds and different way of playing as well uh, with the flute, as well as uh, with uh, the harp. And, and so again, when, where, when Elizabeth um, sent me a few months ago, uh, the flyer of uh, the Progressive Musicians uh, competition, it was absolutely obvious that uh, I had to select this piece. 
<laughs> That's wonderful. I heard, yes, there are some new techniques of playing the flute and yeah. um, the ensemble with the harp. But there, I believe there's also like a program of the piece. It moves from um, one movement yeah, to the it, next one. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it, it's actually, actually co constructed like a story. And you have the torment, the torture with... Um, yeah, some difficulties in the second movement and the third movement is like, you know, uh, the hope, the joy and an inner dance in the yeah, yeah, feelings. Fantastic. So. It, it was very interesting. It, um, the, the title really carries the story and it was really yes. good to have the title corresponding so closely with that piece so people could understand what the changes are about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And what I love is to to tell a story and and to fully when when I compose one of the main features of my own musical uh, composition and words is to to fully immerse in the experience uh, of the atmosphere and, and ambience. So I like to enter in my own mood. I'm telling a story in my mind and I'm just telling the story in my music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you sure do. And uh, I want to congratulate you with um, your piece being selected for the performance at the Laureate's Gala concert um, at Carnegie Hall. Um, b because, you know, the, the entire jury, um, I'm not part of the jury, but I know the results. The yeah. entire jury voted yes for your piece. Um, like, oh. there was not even one maybe <laughs> in there oh, that's so nice and everyone so nice was so hear. impressed with that composition yeah thank you yeah i composed this piece with all my heart and and so it's really great to hear that thank you so much yeah and um i don't know if you were but um as a composer you were also entered in the pool of candidates for the adler and adler oaks um oh, audience that. favorite award we don't have the results yet we will be announcing okay. them this sunday yeah. so okay. stay tuned you're in the pool of um uh, that and the audience uh, already made their vote the voting okay. is closed so we'll find out i, I can't wait to find out who won <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to um, show our audience um, a little clip of the yeah. fusion, where you, I believe you perform with yeah, your sister. Exactly. Yeah, let's, yeah, exactly. Let's watch this um, clip. Perfect. Thank you. 
fantastic piece. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> your ensemble with your sister is just incredible. Um, I, I, I can see and I can hear how together <laughs> on the same you're on the same mission. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a bit more about this piece and why and how you composed it? Um, I actually created a, a recital with my sister. I definitely love my sister and we have the chance to, to work together. And so I created a, a, a recital with my own composition, a bit half an, an hour of my composition and fusion is one of the piece. And yes, it's it's a, it's a, it's an inner story, another inner story with a lo lot of joy, and it's the end of uh, fusion is um, is in three movements, and this is the third movement, a bit like in uh, in Metamorphose, you know, with uh, full of joy, like like an explosion of uh, yeah. Of <laughs> it definitely has an explosion of energy there. Yeah, so would energy. you say this is like a suite or more like a sonata for violin and piano? What's the genre? Mm, I would say it's free. I would say so. <laughs> free genre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... Yes, 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 exactly. That's very interesting. Your your music is um, both, to me at least, both very free but also very structured. So you yes. take the the audience and you carry us through the unfolding story. And interesting, how um, how does that fit in maybe traditional formats or uh, yeah. how you um, do this composition and how you decide um, about the presentation, the inner structure of um, each of the piece which you plan to compose. Um, the choice of the instrument is uh, depend completely on what I want to express. The more important is what I want to express. And uh, so sometimes I start in meditation, you know, before composing, because it helps me to, to enter in my own universe. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, yes, uh, there's, there, there are um, composition I compose completely when I was um laid on the ground and just think to to nature to the cosmos to to the universe and 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 yes the instrument uh, with the specific sounds um touch my heart in different ways in in metamorphosis for instance the combination between the um, the flute and the harp who are you know gentle sounds um for me it was the joy and in the same time i wanted to try another kind of sound i will i wanted to try the battle i wanted to try but for me it's yes it's i my my, my way of composing is very free i i agree that there are a structure there are a structure because i listen to my piece again and again in my head so it's like it's uh, yeah there is a line the storyline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the storyline. Yeah, the storyline helps me a lot to compose, actually. So how do you prepare the storyline? Do you start with the storyline or do you start by writing from the first note and go forward? I start with the first... The fir and, and after, I forgot the story. How I start... Yeah, I start with a, uh, with a story, with a very specific story, you know, uh, and and after that, I just came into into the mood of the piece, and completely yeah, and and I'm in, in my word. <laughs> How interesting! So you basically just switched to music language, like yeah, you know some exactly. bilingual people switch from French exactly. to German and back. Exactly. So Oh, yeah, that, that's very interesting. Um, and I'm sure it's very interesting to other composers who are watching this program. And I want to invite everyone, please tune in to our programs and uh, uh, subscribe to our channels if you're interested to meet people like Anne. And uh, um, of course, leave your comments. If you leave your comments uh, during the live uh, broadcast of the program, we'll be able to bring them on screen and um, offer our guests to uh, respond and um, uh, share their um, their insights to whatever questions you might have. Uh, if you watch the program afterwards, you still can leave the comments and we'll communicate that to our guests and uh, ask them to come in back. 
So, um, but most important, click that button, subscribe, so you get the notification when we are live again. And now I would like to um, offer you to um, watch um, a clip of another composition by Anne. The taste of apples is red. That's a very intriguing title. So let's see what the music says. <laughs> What a gorgeous and intriguing piece. Brava. Thank you. And beautiful. Um, the title yes. is very intriguing and the music is very mysterious. Can you please give us a little bit of insight behind the scenes of what this piece is about, how you compose it, it and why? Yeah, um, it's another part of my composition. I'm also a composer for films and the taste of apples is red is uh, the name of the film and uh, yeah i have got the chance to to record with fabulous musicians for for this uh, feature film israeli feature film uh two years ago and and i had the chance to 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 get um to have um um how uh, to win a competition uh, to win uh, the the music to yeah to win the music of a competition uh, last year. Why uh, am I not surprised? Do you keep winning <laughs> all the competitions? <laughs> no, no, but yeah, but I, I definitely love to compose uh, for films because you enter into not only into your, your inner world, but into the inner world of a film, of a story, another kind of story, you know. And and yes, I, I definitely love this uh, that experience. I'm currently working on a Georgian film, completely other experience, uh, with a specific uh, yeah specific music Georgian music, and also with um, an animated series for children. Mm -hmm. And it's oh, very wow. interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting because you 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 are working. In an animation film, animation feature film, um, with the um, with the picture, you are seeing the picture in the same time, creating at the same time, you know, and you are composing, and you are you are with in a di dialogue with uh, the picture and and the film. So it's very interesting, yeah. How I interesting. Like I always wanted to know how the composers and the film directors approach that. So do you wait for the film to be complete as a picture and then you start composing or do you go like 
yeah. step yeah, by step? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I definitely love to start uh, with the beginning, at, at the beginning, because we have time, we could talk with the... Uh, with the, the director, with the producer, and, and we have time to create an, a world, a, a world and, and maybe with the editing, you know, you can, you can start composing, you have all your you, the time you want, and you, you, you send the music to the director, and, and, uh, and so he can edit the film with my music and it's very interesting because you have a good mix between between the two between the picture and between the music but most of the time it's not possible and we are arriving as a composer as a, in a post production which is great also but we have less time really less time and uh, yeah everything is going to <laughs> you have to be quick and to to be efficient and it's nice also it's very nice but it it completely depends on uh, on the the project you have okay so i i assume it kind of cuts into your sense of freedom because then you have you know time stamp to time stamp this is the time for this yeah. kind of music and this is the time for that kind of music and yes, that's exactly um, exactly and and it's very it. interesting to to talk with the the director when we want the music and why because it's very important and when we are just going to to let the silence because the silence is also the music That's and right. you have to it's very important to have silence in in a film for instance or maybe in just in a piece uh, like a, a, a could that could be performed at Carnegie Hall because it's this this silence who can uh, highlight the music after that's right. Now, um, as a composer, are you also part of adding maybe ambient sounds or even, you know, like um, yeah, whatever also. soundtracks yeah. to yeah. the film? Yes, yes, yes. And I think um, I love compose with a uh, real sound of the life. Mm -hmm. I remember a short movies I composed uh, two months ago. Uh, they were an accident and uh, and I, um, I mixed with the violins, the shock of the accident, and you know, with the car and so on. And it makes a very specific sound that can't be recognized. You know, uh, exactly. We we are listening to to this piece of music, and we are wondering what is it exactly. You know, behind the violin. And I think it's very interesting because it uh, could make a link between. The, the the picture and the music absolutely and uh, um, you know every picture evokes memories yeah. for people of what this picture might sound like in real life so that's a very interesting idea to mix the real life sounds like you said with the composed music wonderful <laughs> excuse me we have one more piece which I would like to offer our audience to watch and enjoy the spiral
Now let me guess. Was that your own performance? Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah, quite exactly. a pianist too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Thank so what is this piece? Was it a commission or was it um, no, for no, no, film no. for it? It was just uh, just a lever from my heart and that's it. <laughs> so you, for, a ch for a change, you composed that for your own self. Yeah, for my, for, just for myself. Wonderful. And, and, and I bring it into the light with a recital, of course. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what I love, actually. Uh, actually. For me, uh, music is a, a fantastic and emotional experience uh, of sharing with other human beings. So it's not just for me, it's for other, of course. And it, that's the reason why I love giving um, recital so much and recital of my own composition. Because with, uh, my, recit uh, with my recitals, I can share with the public and tell them what I love, what I, and explain and explain to them how I compose and what are my inspirations, and and for me, um, it's it's um, the concert is important, but also at the end of the concert, it's very important to see people to share, um, you know. With to, to meet the actual people who the real people who came yeah, exactly. and appreciated your music that yeah. that's wonderful so you're bridging the barrier which used to be uh, quite a tall stage barrier between the audience exactly. and the yeah. celebrities it's on stage and um that I yeah think for me it's very obstacle. important yeah. yeah exactly for me it's very very important to to share and to uh, after the, at the end of the concert and and yes i i composed a lot i composed for every um instrument and particular in cinema but uh my instrument my my heart is for the piano it's it was of my best friend you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah, let us know when you publish your piano pieces uh, because they're so beautiful. I'm sure um, a lot of pianists and maybe piano teachers and students would like to, you know, musicians always yes. look for new music. Um, there's nothing wrong with Clementi Sonatinas, but we've heard maybe too much of the same. So, um, yeah, I know that musicians are always looking for new great compositions like yours, and p there's so many pianists out there. Everyone would like to play it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank I you. also want to ask you a little bit about the practical side of things. You're not if just, you know, just, I don't want to say just, you're a fabulous composer, but you're also a successful composer. And you're also a very young, successful, fabulous composer. And um, for a lot of people who really love music, love composition, it's always a difficult question of um, dedicating a lot of yeah. time to the profession and not knowing what um, you know the practical outcome is going to be of it. Yeah. So you get a lot of commissions and a lot of opportunities to make your music not only beautiful, not only uh, yours, but also serve I, um, the purposes of collaboration and um, hopefully you get paid for at least some of it and building yeah. your career so I want to ask you how you do that and what would you recommend to others who are maybe stepping on that path or considering that path maybe have, possess yeah. a great talent but you people who want to know how to also manage yeah, their absolutely. career so that is it is successful Yes, it's a very, very important question, and um, I would say I think as a composer, it's important. It's very good to to have more than one string in your bow, and uh, that's why I'm a compo I'm a composer for for the stage. I I compose a lot with my, uh, for my sister and I, and perform uh, a lot. Uh, because it's a way to share your music, to share your composition, to to be recognized and so on. Uh, I'm also a composer for films, I as you you understand, and and it's another kind of way uh, to 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 be recognized. And, and and yes, I think the the most important thing is to to meet people. To, to participate to composition also because it's a very very good way like like now it's a fantastic way to to be to be recognized to be seen and and this is important if you are in your in your bedroom in your nothing is going to happen 
So, so it's very important to share your music and to be uh, not shy with that. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I started composing when I started the piano. For me, it was my way of uh, of talking, <laughs> and <laughs> and and I was a bit uh, I was a bit shy. It was my secret garden at the beginning, and and now. And now when I see the, the joy I can share and, and the joy it could be to listen to my music, it's, it just gives me the, the, the energy to continue and so on. So, um, so yes, I, I mean, of course it's a very a path, a difficult path and you have to be patient, you have to be curious to always, um, yeah, to, 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 to be... <laughs> To resistant, uh, yeah, <laughs> to be resistant. Yeah, you're right. To be resistant and persistent. And, and persistent. It's very mm. important to, to be persistent because uh, yes, I'm young, but I'm on the on 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 the the composition market for a long time, and and I never give up, never. And and it's very very important because at the and but for that you have to be completely passionate with the composition. It's very, very important. Otherwise, it's, you have to stop. <laughs> and it's not worth it. <laughs> the trouble yeah. is not worth it. And yeah, the exactly. passion carries you through. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful uh, advice to everyone. And uh, you're so yeah. wise and you're so experienced. And like you said, this is, um, I, I agree with um, every word you said. This is a great advice to everyone. Now, Anne, our time on the program is coming to the end. And I really appreciate you coming in with the great insights and with, with your wonderful music. It's uh, a great pleasure to and a privilege for, for me to meet you and to work with you. And I wish you tremendous success in the future and a lot of inspiration and a lot of great music to be Thank out so much. there. Thank you so much. It was such a great pleasure to meet you, Anna. Okay, uh, we'll say goodbye to Anne and I just want to remind everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That we have a lot more coming up in this season. This season just um, rolling uh, with uh, 80 miles an hour and we have uh, another deadline coming up on uh, May 10th. Don't miss the deadline to apply for next season 24-25 at Carnegie Hall. Uh, we have called for uh, composers to submit their scores and we invite performers, um, instrumentalists and vocalists and people who want to perform with orchestras. Um, the next auditions are May 17 through 21. And then the, the, one, the next cycle of auditions, and this is going to be the last one for this season, uh, June, 17 and, uh, June 14 through 17. And here we are auditioning and considering compositions for the um, next season at the Carnegie Hall, which will consist of seven concerts and we'll have two orchestras in there. Um, so don't miss your chance to apply, be considered and step on that wonderful stage. We also have, um, in the same dates, auditions for soloists and composers and vocalists and instrumentalists to apply to be, f to be featured soloists with orchestras around the world. The first season of Call Orchestra last season um, was smaller. We only had one con uh, one orchestra with two concerts. This season has grown to four orchestras in different countries now performing um, the concerts and also doing the recordings. Um, and the next season has in stock a lot more. It's just growing exponentially. Um, this uh, Don't miss your opportunity and your chance to be in those auditions. Just like Anne said, be out there, put yourself out there and get recognized. And also um, for those who are watching and maybe interested in our other shows, uh, every Thursday and Sunday, we present Magnificent Nine. Those are programs dedicated to uh, Beethoven Ninth Symphonies. Um, they are narrated, the scripts and the narration are um, done by uh, Lauren Strapchak, who is a fantastic composer, conductor, and musicologist, um, and worked with uh, for many, many years with the Chicago Symphony, presenting over 400 pre-concert lectures for the Chicago Symphony. Now, in the past world, you had to live in Chicago or fly across the world to uh, see the Chicago Symphony performance and Lawrence Rapchick's um, fantastic 
of engaging in very humorous and very insightful, of course, um, pre-lecture concerts. Now we produce these films together with the architects of music and his um, understanding and an insight into the architecture and the inner workings of Beethoven's composition are on display. Everyone can see those. So on Thursdays and Sundays at uh, on Thursdays at 2 p.m. and on Sundays at 12 noon Eastern Standard, tune in. And if you missed any of them, everything is saved. You didn't really miss anything. You can go to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And you can see on the playlists the previous programs in there. And um, I also want to thank all the fantastic partners who help us with these productions and who support us with their energy, with their expertise, with their understanding and resources. Thank you, fantastic partners from all over the world. These are our music organizations, educational organizations, various platforms, um, and these are run by people who are very dedicated to moving music forward and making closer connection with the audience and among the musicians and uh, we thank to many collaborations stream on 50 plus platforms and channels of course we are on every major platform you can see on the screen if you missed us on facebook go to vimeo or youtube or instagram or twitch or alignable and these are like major platforms but we are also on more than 50 additional channels and curated platforms in different countries so if you live in um uk you can go to maestro online that's a, a uk platform united kingdom uh, if you live in germany you can see us on common time and so forth um and all of our programming on those platforms is absolutely free to the audience we bring value and we bring engagement and excitement about music because music really can in enrich and um, make everyone's life so much better. Um, and with that, I would like to thank our fantastic Virtual Concert Halls team. And the Virtual Concert Halls has been created by musicians to serve music musicians in the audience. So you see on screen, those are names of our producers, directors, designers, broadcast designers, hosts, um, and everyone on our team are also musicians, performers, educators, um, the, who put their heads together to bring these programs to you. And uh, I want to um, give many thanks to Jennifer Wong, who behind the scenes is directing this program for you today. Um, and now I want to thank Anne de Boisson one more time for being with me in this studio. Um, this has been great pleasure. And with this, we'll say goodbye, but not for very long. Um, we'll see you tomorrow and Sunday and uh, all the days afterwards. Thank you, Anne, for being with me. Thank you. Bye now.